Give peace, O Lord, to those who wait for you, that your prophets be found true. Hear the prayers of your servant and of your people, Israel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. A warm welcome to you all, those with us in church, and those joining us online. Uh, just in case any questions get asked, two of the servers here are from the same family, and that's why they're not socially distancing. We begin Mass, as we always do, acknowledging that we're together as the family of God. It doesn't matter whether we're here in church or following the Mass at home. We're still that one family, united in God's love. So we invite God's grace into our hearts and we ask healing and forgiveness for all our faults and failings. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Look upon us, O God, creator and ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy, grant that we may serve you with all our heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Ecclesiasticus. Resentment and anger, these are foul things, and both are found with the sinner. He who exact, exacts vengeance will experience the vengeance of the Lord, who keeps strict account of sin. Forgive your neighbor the hurt he does you, and when you pray, your sins will be forgiven. If a man nurses anger against another, can he then demand compassion from the Lord? Showing no pity for a man like himself, can he then plead for his own sins? Mere creature of flesh, he cherishes resentment. Who will forgive him his sins? Remember the last things and stop hating. Remember dissolution and death and live by the commandments. Remember the commandments and do not bear your neighbor ill will. Remember the covenant of the Most High and overlook the offense. The word of the Lord. The Lord is compassion and love, slow to anger and rich in mercy. The Lord is compassion and love, slow to anger and rich in mercy. My soul give thanks to the Lord all my being, bless his holy name. My soul give thanks to the Lord and never forget all his blessings. The Lord is compassion and love, slow to anger and rich in mercy. 
It is he who forgives all your guilt, who heals every one of your ills, who redeems your life from the grave, who crowns you with love and compassion. The Lord is compassion and love, slow to anger and rich in mercy. His wrath will come to an end. He will not be angry forever. He does not treat us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our faults. The Lord is compassion and love, slow to anger and rich in mercy. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so strong is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our sins. The Lord is compassion and love, slow to anger and rich in mercy. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. The life and death of each of us has its influence on others. If we live, we live for the Lord. If we die, we die for the Lord, so that alive or dead, we belong to the Lord. This explains why Christ both died and came to life. It was so that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. The word of the Lord. Please remain seated as we say the gospel acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. You have the message of eternal life. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Peter went up to Jesus and said, Lord, how often must I forgive my brother if he wrongs me? As often as seven times. Jesus answered, not seven, I tell you, but 77 times. And so the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who decided to settle his accounts with his servants. When the reckoning began, they brought him a man who owed 10,000 talents, but he had no means of paying. So his master gave orders that he should be sold, together with his wife and children and all his possessions, to meet the debt. At this, the servant threw himself down at his master's feet. Give me time, he said, and I will pay the whole sum. And the master's servant felt so sorry for him that he let him go and cancelled the debt. Now as this servant went out, he happened to meet a fellow servant who owed him 100 denarii. And he seized him by the throat and began to throttle him. Pay what you owe me, he said. His fellow servant fell at his feet and implored him, saying, Give me time and I will pay you. But the other would not agree. On the contrary, he had him thrown into prison till he should pay the debt. His fellow servants were deeply distressed when they saw what had happened, and they went to their master and reported the whole affair to him. Then the master sent for him. You wicked servant, he said, I cancelled all that debt of yours when you appealed to me. Were you not bound then to have pity on your fellow servant, just as I had pity on you? And in his anger... The master handed him over to the torturers till he should pay all his debt. And that is how my heavenly father will deal with you unless you each forgive your brother from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Sometimes when we hear the teaching on forgiveness in the Gospels, it comes across quite harshly, the punishments if we don't. If we go back to the beginning of the Mass, if we're to use the exact words from the book, the penitential rite will begin, let us acknowledge our sins. That idea that we're sinners comes in right at the start of the Mass. It seems a strange way to come to what should be a celebration after all, that's why we're here, to celebrate God's love. 
And if we were to go to a party and the first thing we had to do was make it very clear that we knew we weren't worthy to be there and we shouldn't have been invited, it would make us, well, it makes a bit of a miserable start, doesn't it? But why? Why do we acknowledge our sins? It's not about dragging up all those things in our mind that we prefer to forget. It's not about being miserable. It's all about forgiveness. It's about acknowledging that we're not perfect. And Christ came to earth and lived and died for us anyway. God's love is there for us, whoever we are. Whatever our position in life, whatever we've been through, God still loves us. And all we're called to do when we acknowledge our sins is to acknowledge our need for that gift of Christ. It's not about raking up the past. And for some, that's what they will tend to do. All the sins that have been forgiven a thousand times over by God and still we accuse ourselves in our hearts. Those are the things we should leave behind. It's just acknowledging that from day to day, we do have something on our conscience, something where we recognise that we've not achieved that perfection of humanity that we were created for. And then as we acknowledge our need for God's forgiveness, so we take a step once again at the start of Mass to being a people of forgiveness. A people ready not to subject ourselves to all the threats that appear in the Gospels, because if we know that God has forgiven us, surely we wouldn't go out and accuse someone else straight away. And surely, if someone wrongs us, we will be ready to pass that forgiveness on. But we need to be honest with ourselves too. Certainly, if I go back to my school days, I can think of many occasions when, told in very firm terms that we had to say sorry, we did just that, sorry. And we didn't mean a word of it. And that doesn't get us off the hook. It's not about what we say. It's about what we intend. It's about what we feel. And sometimes we feel that we can't do it. We want to forgive, but there's no point in pretending that we have if that's not what's in our hearts because that just breathes bitterness inside us. Those are the times when we try and we acknowledge that we've failed. And then when we come to the Lord's Prayer, forgive us as we forgive those who trespass against us. Then if the way that we've forgiven someone else is not quite perfect because we've only tried and we haven't quite managed it, let's be sure that when God tries to forgive us, he will manage it. And also, he'll give us the grace that we need to become more and more that people of forgiveness. It picks up from the Gospel last week, doesn't it? when we're talking about how we address those who offend us. And we address them as Christians, with forgiveness and with love. Let's pray that God can help us to achieve it day by day. And now we profess our faith in God in the words of the Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. 
who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now, as you're aware, as part of the protocols for the pandemic, we leave out the formal bidding prayers. But we'll just pause for a moment and bring before God all those things that we have in our hearts where we invite God's grace to be there for our loved ones and for our world. And we ask our Blessed Lady to join us in our prayer. Hail Mary. Full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Heavenly Father, we place all our cares and concerns into your hands. Guide us, we pray, at every step of life's journey, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sins. Now would you remain seated and pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look with favour on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these, your servants' offerings, that what each has offered to the honour of your name may serve the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity, made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit, might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the church. And so in company with the choirs of angels we praise you, and with joy we proclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. Jesus took bread and giving you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. And now again we remain seated as at the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching. We dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who says to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
the body of Christ. The blood of Christ. As we come to Holy Communion once again, do please wait to be guided by the stewards and we receive in silence and at arm's length. For those joining us online, we share in a spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. 
I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. How precious is your mercy, O God. The children of men seek shelter in the shadow of your wings. And let's remain seated now as we pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies, so that its effects and not our own desires may always prevail in us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you for sharing in our Mass today. For those in church who've picked up a newsletter, do please take it with you. But again, we encourage everyone, if you can, to uh, see it online where there are all sorts of links that will give you more information. You'll see from there that the sacramental program information has been updated and we will be contacting families, should be by the end of this week. We have in place a process that we should be able to work with. We recognise that for some families, you really will want to have the crowds Oh, well, not exactly crowds, but the numbers supporting that we would normally have. And of course, we can't do that just now. So if anyone would prefer to defer until we can have greater numbers in church, then obviously we'll respect that wish. But for others, it will be a very small gathering during the daytime and with just two guests for each of the children and several small masses. But there'll be more announced of that during the week and there is more in the newsletter. And then on the website as well, the... Uh, coronavirus page has been updated as well so again thank you for sharing in the mass the Lord be with you and may almighty God bless you all the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit Amen go forth now the mass is ended thanks be to God <laughs>